What's up, y'all? We're going to jump straight into it. This is Dual Economics. I'm Mike, and I'm here with Curse of Crypto. For this week's rundown, we got a lot of good topics for you guys. We're going to be talking about action in the crypto markets, um, specifically Bitcoin um, hitting the $30,000 mark, BRC20 coins, XRP and their lawsuit. We're going to be talking about the conflict in Israel, how it's going to affect surrounding countries, the United States, in other uh, parts of the economy well, parts of the economy in general. I'm also going to be talking about the S&P um, 500 gold markets, real estate markets and doing a bit of a um, brief market update for you guys. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and drop that intro and get straight into it. All right, y'all, so diving straight in. Um, I don't know if y'all, well, everybody, I'm sure, has heard about the um, conflict going on between um, Palestine and what's, um, as of the last 56 years, now considered to be Israel. Um, as a result, uh, a lot of things are being heated up in the Middle East. Uh, from what I'm understanding and with what I've been reading and hearing about, U.S. troops in, our, in Iraq and um, Syria have now been... Um, um, not necessarily attacked, but there have been attempts to attack them um, as, as the tensions rise. As you guys may or may not know, many of the Palestinian people, the majority of the Palestinian people are Arabic people. Um, so you do have Arabic people in this region who um, actually support Palestinians, who do not support the um, Israel people, um, basically um, taking over or um, gaining territory within their home within the Palestinian home territory. And you also have a lot of Arabic nations in the area who do not like U.S. and um, Eastern, U.S., um, European and different Eastern countries consistently meddling in their affairs. So as a result, you do have a lot of tension boiling up. Um, as a result of this, um, Biden is expected to spend another $100 billion um, in order to fund um, different military aid around the world. We know that anytime they say they're going to spend $100 billion, they're probably going to end up spending a trillion over the next few years, which is going to add to the U.S. budget deficit. Um, as of right now, it looks like they're going to be spending $60 billion on Ukraine. Um, they're going to be spending $40 billion on um, Israel. And they're also going to be sending funds to help protect Taiwan and the U.S.-Mexican border. So my personal opinion, and um, that's you'll three. See it unfold. What's, what's that, bro? That's three. Yeah, three. 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 I forgot. I mean, I, we, Ukraine and uh, we have Ukraine, and Israel. We oh, it was, it was getting like stage now, nah, bro. It's, it's three and a half. Yeah, three and a half. Bro, it's like, dang, that's three of them things, man. Yeah. Like, so the thing is, bro. Of course, the U.S. border. There's, there's been a lot of issues with the border, and they're fearful that um people who don't like the U.S., potential terrorists and all that stuff. And I think it's mostly a target towards Arabic people. They don't want them to come into the United States for fear of um, terrorist attack. And I think they're also trying to protect Taiwan from fears of China choosing to strike Taiwan while the U.S. has um, its focus on so many things at one time. Let me go to the next one. So... Biden is planning on spending a hundred billion dollars. That's in the plans as of right now. Um, from my understanding, Janet Yellen is 100% ready to back, um, according to what she said, um, the Israeli people. And she, she, she thinks the U.S. is in a position to be able to fund both wars in both Israel and the Ukraine. I don't want to call the thing in Israel a war now, but she thinks we can have we have enough money to fund the conflict in Israel and the war between Russia and Ukraine. And um, I don't know if she's bluffing. I, I think this is a bluff. But the thing about it is, it gotta if, be a bluff, man. I, I, more than likely. But if if we, she's saying that we can support two, but she did not say that we can support three. So <laughs> if if something was to happen in Taiwan, what can we do? If something was to now happen on the U.S. border financially, now what can we do? If something was to go on somewhere else, in one of the places that we've already had issues with, um, Iraq, Syria, uh, something going on with North Korea, if 
though if something else was to happen right now, what could we actually do financially? Especially being that we're in the deficit. Um, as of right now, based off of what I'm seeing, Biden and Yellen seem ready to go. But um I don't know, bro. Maybe they can pump XRP. They're gonna have to pump something, bro, because <laughs> maybe my they thing, can pump my thing is, bro, they they're doing this right now while Jerome Powell is supposed to be driving down inflation, right? Yeah, exactly, man. The two major parts of inflation are energy prices and um, and yes. housing prices. Energy and housing. So if we're at war with the major and have conflict in the area with the major oil producers, plus we have, um, what are they doing to Russia again? The, the, um, the sanctions with all that going on I would expect oil prices to go up more, which would increase inflation. And as far as housing goes, if, if this costs more to move material, that's a reason for housing to go up. And as of right now, interest rates are going up. So I, I, I really, I really don't know, man. So it's tough. Maybe, but it's maybe, tough. It's tough, man. It's tough. That's, that's maybe tough. The, maybe the housing market will be where some leeway is given housing and stock market because i don't if I, I don't see oil coming down right now housing could go down especially with interest rates being so high so maybe that's going to ca cause your own power to want to take interest rates up higher faster to try to reduce inflation faster but it's like i said if he's trying to reduce inflation while at the same time biden and yellen is coming up with a plan to spend more money so if they're not going to spend less to reduce the budget and get rid of inflation i i guess they're going to wreck the housing market try to wreck stock uh what else what, what else could they do like cut jobs or something like that <laughs> you know what i'm saying I, I i'm interested to see how they're going to battle this inflation while doing things at the same time to simultaneously increase inflation and i also wouldn't be surprised if um if, if we switch presidents if, if jerome uh powers fire bro like you know wait 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 so if Jerome Powell is fired before the election, <laughs> you oh, no, 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 not, not, not before the election. I think if we get a new president, this is kind of on a side note. If we get a new president that's a Republican, I think they're gonna fire Jerome Powell. Bro. Who, who, who assigned um, Jerome Powell? It was Biden, bro. To be honest, or was it, or was it, uh, or was it, or was it Trump? Ah, uh, it, 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 bro. To be real with you, it might have been Obama. Um. When who plays Jerome Because this, I don't know, bro. This. Okay, so in this, December 2000, 2011, that was during Obama's term. So yeah, I think I think the um, Republicans are probably gonna end up getting rid of him. I don't want to stay on that, too, that topic too long, bro. But I think in order to fight inflation with everything going up with oil and stuff, they're gonna have to kill the. Um, they're gonna have to wreck the housing market. I think they're gonna have to wreck the stock market. Um, already with the interest rates being so high, many of the major, um, many major real estate. Um, how can I say this? major real estate trading companies are already um, urging the Federal Reserve to what's going on here to to lower interest rates. Um, a letter was written to Jerome Powell. It says that on this article it says this week. So this was last week. A letter was written to Jerome Powell, um, I guess the week before last, by the Mortgage Bankers Association, the um, NAR, which is the National Association of Realtors, and the National Association of Home Builders, all requesting that he stop increasing interest rates and actually begin to lower them because of the effects it's going to have on the housing market. So at this point, you have builders, you have real realtors, which are basically real estate agents, and you have bankers, which are basically the lenders. Builders, agent intermediaries, and the bankers are all saying that interest rates are going to need to go down. If they, in order for basically home and mortgage loans to continue, um, I know I'm kind of speeding through this, bro. But 
if it's really a lot of crazy stuff going on right now. I wanted to show you guys something that's going on the same page. If I can't find it, it's not all that serious because I've already said the gist of it. But check this out, bro. Sales of previously owned homes are down 15% compared to one year ago. Mind you, out during and after the pandemic, sales um, began to rise because interest rates were super low. But they're down 15% from a year ago. Mortgage out applications are at the lowest rate since 1996. So <laughs> we're, we're, we're not talking about during the pandemic, right before the pandemic. We're not talking about the Great Recession. We're not talking about the dot-com bubble. We're talking about past all that stuff. They're down to where they were in 1996. A lot of people are saying that we're probably, we probably won't get a housing market crash where we did in 07 because, um, because we, we aren't seeing as many foreclosures. My thing is, I, I just think it really ha hasn't happened yet. And that's, to me, another one of the times where people are basically saying it's going to be different this time. We're seeing the exact same thing. The old people ain't selling their houses, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, they seem, like I don't think the old people, the boomers and whatnot, like, they not selling their houses. Like, most of them probably got their houses, you know. Most, made, most, of, them, most of them probably paid for it. Yes. Most of them probably you know paid for yeah, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, and they, they're they the ones that sit, I feel like they're the ones that sit on the majority of it. You know what I'm saying? And, bro, oh, check this out, prices bro. Of they house, the prices of their houses is going up, up. So it's like, why would I want to say, you know, why would I want to say all right now? Check this out, bro. What, what, how, how much you think the average house go for? The average house. You said the average house? The average, the average decent house. Nothing too crazy, nothing too small. The average house that the average person will want, how much you think that house would cost? In in, you, in, these, in, in these in these conditions right now that we live in currently, you're in Atlanta. So how much would that house cost? Shoot, man, what? House. Shoot, a decent house. She made what? <laughs> in Atlanta, probably what? Three, three fifty maybe. That's what I was thinking about. Three four. I was thinking about three, three four. But I'm, but I'm three, 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 lower, three lower end. Let's say you get something kind of out of the city a little bit. Decent price. That's how you get it. So if I'm out, so if I if I'm moving out of the city, hold on, hold on, hold on, city, hold on, hold on, bro, hold on, bro. Let me make one. There's a point to me asking that question. Mm -hmm. Three hundred thousand dollars. The average, the average um, interest rate right now on a thirty year mortgage is seven point six percent. At three hundred thousand dollars, bro, seven. Let's just say seven percent. Not even seven point six. Seven percent of one hundred thousand seven thousand dollars. So for three hundred thousand dollars, we multiply that by three. That's twenty one thousand dollars a year that's solely going to interest. Twenty one thousand dollars. Twenty one thousand dollars divided by. Let me go to my calculator right quick. So that's twenty one thousand divided by twelve months in a year. That's one thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars per month. That's solely going to interest, bro. One thousand seven hundred fifty. And most of the time, you're paying most of the interest in the beginning for the first 15 years. So the number's probably going to be higher than that. But in that first year, generally speaking, you're looking at almost $2,000 a month going to interest alone, and that is not to the house. Yeah. 2000 Okay. So, hey, hey, so just a question, though. This is a question, though. This is a question, though. Is now a good time to be? I don't think it is. But do you think you have you think of some people out there that's thinking maybe this is a good time to buy a house right now? Because, yeah, even though interest rates are at seven percent, it's know, a bro, 10, you know, 10 I'm, 15 years from now, it can be at 12 percent. So, I, bro, I don't care about that. That's that, that's silly talk to me. That, that, that's just comparing on bad to worse mm -hmm. because, bro, the same, we just talked about a house for three hundred thousand dollars. The amount of interest that we just talked about, <laughs> you're going to end up paying that's over 30 that. years. Six hundred and thirty thousand dollars in interest on the home that's worth three hundred. So that you're works. basically going to pay a million dollars for a three hundred thousand dollars house. <laughs> if, if if I if I overcharge you three times, is that a deal? No, nah, I, 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 no. You just bought me two houses. <laughs> I just bought you three houses. <laughs> Let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and wrap this up so we can get into your story, though, bro. The last thing that I want to talk about. Is that right now? Um, I expected the, the stock market to kind of take a dive with this whole 
conflict going on in the Middle East. Um, but it looks like um, the stocks have went down all in all over the last month. But it looks like there was a pickup during the middle of the month. So as of right now, stocks have not really, really been hit based off of the conflict that's going on. So I'm expecting the aftermath of this conflict to still hit. I really don't expect the aftermath to come to a head until a year from now, late 2024, going into 2025 is when I expect to see the exact number. So I'm going to be paying a lot of attention to stocks over the next year. Um, I'm waiting for a few things to fall and then I'll start dollar costing. I don't want to start high and end up just shooting myself in the foot and losing money. But make sure y'all are, are on the lookout when it comes to that. The NASDAQ is almost mirroring that. Kind of went up during the middle of the month and is now kind of rolling back off. As the tensions increase in the Middle East, I'm expecting the fall and everything. And hopefully I can accumulate a little bit during that dip before everything um, shoots up. And this is basically what I, what I project. Things will go up over time. Lastly, I'm going to go ahead and end off my segment with the metals as usual, which did see a pump after the beginning of the, um, the whole crisis that's going on in the Middle East. I'm not going to want to put this on the six month. Oh, man. That, hey, that chart, may, that chart may keep on going up, man, especially when people try to find a, a flight for safety for their money. Definitely, bro. I, I think I think the only reason I'm gonna get back to it in just a second. I think the only reason that it hasn't went up all that much yet. I mean, and it's still up. Come on, all these ads. I think the reason that it hasn't went up a whole lot yet is because we're coming out of a time period where, on a consistent basis, most metals were below their all-time high, and because they were below their all-time high, I think you had. A long time people, people were waiting to see hmm, when is it going to hit the high. So when it hits the high, people are like, hmm, it's going to go down again. It's going to be a long time again before it hits the high because they were, that's what they were previously used to. But if you look at the all-time gold chart, you have times where gold might hit a high, stay down for a long time, and people get used to it being down. But once it starts to hit highs again, it normally hits highs for a few years before it stops to hit highs again. So I'm expecting these few highs to be the beginning of probably a decade of consistent highs year after year, months over months, new high after new high. So until people get used to that new trend, I do think we're going to see a lot of volatility. And it's going to be a, a good time to pick up for the people who are interested in trading for um, the long term. So let me go back to what I was saying, though, when it comes to this crisis in the, in the Middle East. All right, so the crisis kicked off in the Middle East around October 1st, October 2nd, somewhere around that weekend. Um, prior to that, the metals had been taking a, a, a bit of a beating. If you notice, the chart is kind of going down if you look from here to here. I'm not going to go to all the metals just right now, but it's the same for pretty much all of them. They were taking a, a, a bit of a beating. And as soon as the information came out about the conflict in the Middle East, you'll see that gold went up if we shift to the silver chart. Around that same weekend, you'll see that it spiked um, platinum. Platinum spiked also not as much as gold, and the only metal that did not have a spike was um, palladium. It's been consistently going down. So as far as um, gold, silver, platinum, and palladium, it looks like the stuff is going on. Well, gold, silver, and platinum. It looks like everything is going on in the Middle East. It's kind of pushing up prices. I'm pretty sure they're going to, um, they're going to, um, the supply may have some deficits due to the stuff that's going on in the Middle East. But um, in moving forward, I'm, I'm, I'm really waiting for palladium to equal the price of platinum. Um, at that point, I would probably start purchasing. You know, they can be kind of used um, interchangeably. I am waiting for uh, a good deal on that. And I, do still think right now platinum is probably the better buy um with a lot of automakers switching from palladium to platinum in their catalytic converters i think platinum is, is going to have a run pretty soon i wouldn't be surprised if it goes up to about 1500 to 2000 um it may take some time but i'm definitely waiting on that and um yeah man maybe the, the stuff that's going on in the world is probably going to tip it over of course we don't want um bad stuff to be the reason that our assets go up 
but we do want to be invested just in case those things happen and these assets do generally go up over time anyway so with that being said that's my spiel bro what you got yeah man so let's get let's get into the crypto universe man all right so i'm gonna look at bro why, why you why you pulling it up bro i got a question for you oh what's up, what's up? i did not mean to do that i got it uh why you pulling up got a question um me personally this is just my personal opinion bro you know i ain't the biggest crypto fan but with mm -hmm. so many countries having so many issues so much going on i personally do that maybe not so much long term but at least in the short term uh we'll see as far as long-term stability for crypto over time who nobody really knows for sure ever now but as far as short-term stability it does seem like through this crisis while certain things are plumbing and certain stocks are actually plummeting right now um the major crypto coins bitcoin ethereum they're they're kind of they're kind of sitting kind of stable right now and, and holding value so my question to you bro is do you think the current rise and stability in crypto do you think it's a result of the coins themselves do you think it's a result of what's going on in the west and people kind of running out of money from different countries just in case so they don't lose money with their government or do you think it's solely the um the etfs which which, which one of those all, all the, everything you just said of, of course all but with the price movement that's going on right now which one of those do you think is the biggest pusher out of all of those that you said bro i'll probably say i would probably say the etf i'll probably say the etf because it'll bring more um it'll bring more confidence in the crypto market man and then once we can once we get a bitcoin etf we could also get an ethereum etf you know what i mean maybe we can get a solana etf and then it just goes down the line from there so and, and, I, I, and I, don't, I don't i don't want to interrupt you too much i want to just go ahead and go with your, with your story bro but just i want to go ahead and get this before you start uh, and i'm hey, now go hey bro hey go ahead bro. i like we ask question man go ahead man go ahead man go okay ahead. this 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 is my thing bro and i'm just looking at it and, and this could be great for crypto it could be uh, something that you ain't looked at could be something in that you know the crypto followers haven't looked at yet but i'm just mm -hmm. thinking if crypto is the last and I'm, and I'm more so looking at thinking about bitcoin larger ones more so than altcoins right now uh, if, if they are to last if they are to be stable you have people in the united states who are worried about janet yellen they're worried about inflation they're worried about all the stuff that's going on and and, and in, the, in the dollar value being basically crushed so of course in my opinion i feel like you do have people in the united states who would want bitcoin for that reason same way you got people who want gold stocks and other stuff but some of that money will go towards crypto you have people now imagine if you if you're in in gaza and you're a palestinian and you're basically being kicked out of your country of course you wouldn't want to hold their dollars yeah you don't, you don't even know where you're going so whose dollar do you hold so you know I, I can see it and they and you're on the move so you need something that, that can can go with you i can kind of see that being kind of perfect for them right now and i got something i'm not the biggest advocate but i can see that being perfect for them right now if you're in mm -hmm. taiwan and you may have war going on with china if you're in syria and you may have war going on if you're in iraq and every all your stuff may get blown up your house may get it doesn't matter it doesn't matter how much money you have it doesn't have matter how much gold your stuff may get blown up yeah so I feel like I feel like right now you have a lot of people who just out of straight fear of, you know, not it isn't this not might not be a 30 percent drop for me. This could be an everything drop for me. I feel like you got a lot of those people saying, hey, you know what? I just go ahead and move everything or, or whatever I can to crypto because I could lose it all because of the situations that I have. Yeah, so kind of like, kind of like, uh, remember when the um, when them banks was falling, remember when the yeah, banks was yeah, going exactly. down, and then we saw and we saw uh, Bitcoin and crypto just pump exactly bro so that's that's what i was thinking it would be the, the major reason for the pump but I, I just want to know your thought on it oh man not really like, hey man yeah that's spot on man that's spot on that's spot on that's spot on because uh you know people hey it needs to be a it needs to be a flight to safety man especially people trying to preserve 
preserve their wealth, man. So, and with the and with this ETF news, also, you know, that's bringing a lot of confidence. If, if it had if something going down in the United States, I'm, I'm slapping, I'm slapping folks with silver kilos, bro. You see? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, hey man, I like what I said, bro. Like it ain't, shoot, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't no wrong with buying silver too either, man. It's not, it's really not. So it's, you know, as long as whichever way is right for you know whoever you know whoever's out there listening for you to hold your money, you know, protect your money, you know, definitely go ahead and do that. But all, but you know, remember. I would, I, you know, I'll take it to consideration, you know, look where, look where the trends are going, man. You know what I mean? Look where the trends are going. So, you know, we're, we're answering into a digital AI world. So, you know, a lot of people are going to be, um, you know, we're, we're going to be moving. Everything's going to be digital, man. You know what I mean? So even with these CBDCs, you know, that's digital, you know, eventually, but eventually cash won't go away, man. You really think that you really think the dollar bills really gonna show go away? You know what I'm saying? Like, when you think you think you think that's gonna happen in the next 10 years? I don't think it's I think like it's, in the next 10, like in the next 10 years, you think we're gonna be still handing over cash? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think it's gonna go away, but I think it's gonna be a slower process than we think. I think probably, I mean, people still got money from 100 years ago. I feel like I feel like when we 80. People still gonna have cash. It's just not gonna be like it's we gonna it's gonna be like a weird old guy thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like 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 still like dudes that still collect like blue like I still be collecting Blu-rays and shit. You know, you know what, what I'm saying? saying? Like, like the physical movies. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna it's gonna be like some people who just like ah, I don't I don't trust passwords. I don't like remembering passwords. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be people like that. Yeah. That's another thing too, bro. Um Incredible. Uh, that's another thing too, crypto, bro. Like another thing, yeah. But they, they, <laughs> hey, they need to make a, you know how when you set up your crypto wallet, you have to memorize the seed phrases and whatnot. Like something has to be done. With that. Cause, yeah, they need to update that, bro. Yeah, man. Because because when I when I'm talking to people about it, it's like that's the only thing that's kind of like hindering them. It's like, oh man, if I if I lose these words, I won't be able to, you know, access yeah, bro, my money. They, I mean, I feel like, I, they, to be honest with you, bro, crypto, the majority of it is going to get a lot more centralized. And I feel like as it becomes centralized and you got the, I can't remember what it's called, but you got to like know your customer and all that stuff. Mm. I feel like as all that stuff evolves, you're not going to have to do that. Just like when you go to your bank, you don't have to remember no 12 words. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. And like, and, and I think, and like I said, bro, you know, all this, 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 this inflation and all this other stuff like going on in the world, man, like this ain't our fault. This is the people that we've elected. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro, so it's bro, like, you know, so it's, bro, I, I, it's like, I, how no, can no, 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 bro. It's our fault, bro. Hey, like, look, look, we, yeah, like, first of all, hey, we hey, elect hey, them and we allow them to do what we do, bro. Like, we, we bro, every time they make these changes, we, we, we ain't asking them for that stimulus check, man. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying we should go out and protest or try to go out and do none of that stuff. I don't give a stimulus. Every time they change this stuff, we sit back and watch. And maybe we should go out and do something, not saying nothing bad or nothing like that, but nobody, no, bro. <laughs> Jerome Powell can take interest rates up two percent, two, two, two hundred basis points a day, and everybody just gonna sit back and follow orders. Like, okay, I can't get no house no more. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like that's how it works. Bro. And it's, it's it's really crazy to me because if you gotta, if you, in all honesty, if you gotta take out loans and all that stuff, stuff that means you really can't afford it, bro. So, bro, if it was if it was up to me, they'd get rid of home loans and all that stuff. Now, home prices will go all stuff to get cheaper because you just have to buy it with it, the demand will be based off what people actually have versus money that's being created out of nowhere and given to them. Bro. Like, oh, that's crazy how that it's crazy how that works, man. And that's that's really like that's the system. That's how it, like, that's it's the system, man, bro. And it don't you know what I mean? And it don't it. <laughs> bro, about time, like, bro, you, you know how many bro, you know how many people buy houses they can't afford, bro? Like who the, out of the people who didn't buy a house? Um, who you know them actually bought a house that they could afford? If the average person buy a house mm. and they lose their job, Not right now, if they think about this, bro, think about this. If you can afford a house, that means if you purchase it, that means you can lose your job and you still got it because you were able to afford it and purchase it. If the average person was to buy a house and lose their job for a year, but they roasted, 
Because they just bought something that they couldn't afford. They really used a loan to get it. That means you can't afford it, bro. Slick. Yeah. Yeah. Especially now. You know what I'm saying, bro? Interest rates at 7%. That's 7%. But that's crazy, bro. 7% yeah, on a $300,000 house, bro. It's the I can't afford it fee. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, honestly, bro. Yeah. So, I'd rather, I'd rather keep on investing in crypto until I can get, so I get to the point where at least, at least it's like, okay, if the house costs, I want to get to a point, but at least if a house costs $300,000, I got more than half of it. No, nah, bro. Uh-uh. Like, like at least like if, if it's if it's three fifty if it's three fifty and I got two hundred something in the bank on my portfolio, I'm straight. I I I I really bro. And, and I would take that. I would take that house. I would take that house to another country too. This, I would think this is this is what it thing. means to truly afford something, bro. You know what I'm saying? It, Go ahead. Let's see. And, and and this is this is in my opinion when somebody should actually finance something. If my portfolio is making me enough, let's say I got dividend stocks, right? Mm -hmm. And I got so much dividend stock, the house that we talked about, the $300,000 house we talked about earlier, the interest was like right at $2,000. The payment would have been like $4,000 or something like that. So mm -hmm. if I got investments and those investments give me more than $4,000 a month and I can get that without losing money and I can pay for it, that's the first option that will be affordable because the money is actually being made by me consistently. If something was to happen to me at work, the assets are still making that money to pay for it. So I can afford mm -hmm. it. You get what I'm saying? Literally, I can afford it. The second thing would be for me is I don't need to have all of it. All of it. All of it. Really, I really I would prefer to have three times the amount. But you I, I need, think about it all, oh, bro. I see, you, no, I, I see. I see. I see. I see. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Like you wouldn't buy. That you house, wouldn't buy a place. You wouldn't buy a PlayStation if you couldn't buy it two, three times over. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, know not, what I mean? you really can't afford it, bro. Like if something happened, something you're gonna lose it because you couldn't afford it. Like, like yeah. if you if you really can't purchase it, bro. The house we said was three hundred thousand dollars, but by the time the interest rates and stuff, it's gonna end up being a million dollars, three times more than it costs. If you actually have the three hundred thousand dollars, bro, if you actually have the three hundred thousand dollars, you just pay three hundred and it's over with. You pay the three hundred, but if mm -hmm. you don't have the three hundred, now it's a million, bro. Like whoever whoever had the cash just saved seven hundred thousand dollars, and whoever don't just spent every extra seven hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. So that's who. Yeah, but so they put half on it. If it was, if they put half on it. What? It don't matter. It ain't a million. It's about seven. So no, 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 no. You, you know you what I'm saying? So it no, might be no. If you drop a million, million on it, it depends on how long it takes you to pay it off because you mm -hmm. still have that interest rate there. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's like, crazy, bro. Because it because it just seemed like the interest rates just ain't gonna come down, man. Bro, and that's my thing, bro. Like, is why are people still like? This, this to me ain't normal. People should be making moves based off of the interest rate. Interest, like I said, bro, if you're doing something and you're financing it, more than likely you cannot afford it. The fact mm -hmm. that people are doing things solely based off interest rate, meaning that they're basically buying stuff that they cannot afford straight up. If they just look at straight at interest rates. Yeah, if, if you think of because other outside of that, the interest rate does not matter if you just it's it really don't. Money. It really don't. It, honestly, bro, it, it interest rates really only matter to people that need that they can't need, afford it. That need the money that need because the you money. can't. No, nah, no, nah, it ain't that they need the money. They cannot they afford it. They need to yeah. not want that. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy when you think about it. That's crazy when you think about it right now, though, because the person that really got it interest. They, they just pay it up. They just pay it off and it's over with. They ain't got to worry about how much I got to pay over time because they can afford to do that shit. And the person who don't got to pay the fee. They got to no. worry. They got to worry about, you know, it's, I guess it's two ways of getting whatever it is you want to get. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, one of them is a the quicker, easier way. The other one is, hey, you're going to be stuck with this pay. Nah, so nah, you know. nah, bro. They think it's the quicker, easy way. It's the quicker, harder way. Yeah, because it seems it seems so cool. It's hey, it shit seems so doable and like so 
You know what I mean? It's like, well, yeah, it costs that much and I only got to pay this a month. I think I'd be able to do it. At first, you think that. But, man, after a while, man, them payments start to catch up on you, but you just like, fuck this shit. Yeah, you just slay the payment. Yeah, yeah. I feel you, man. I feel you, bro. Like I say, man, that's, hey, uh, definitely taking that into consideration, bro. Definitely taking that into consideration right now. So, I, I still, hey, hey, man, I have to still think the move is to move where the interest, where, hey, not, shoot, not even where interest rates are low at, but where, shoot, where you can afford it, bro. And it's like, bro, in that, even in Atlanta, it's tough to find you a nice $300,000. I mean, you could, but it's tough to find a $300,000 house in Atlanta that's, you know, yeah, it's, it's going to be four five. You know what I'm saying? Just, that's just, yeah, just, yeah, you brought like that. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I'm saying. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that's the average, the average uh house cost house in Atlanta about right now about four, I think like four hundred something or something. Damn man, five hundred grand, bro. That's all. Once he goes out up at the five hundred, bro, you talking about million dollars, dog? That's crazy. Atlanta finna be like L.A., bro. Bro, once once you talking about interest rate, you talking about one and a half. <laughs> and let it be like California, bro. That's Man, crazy. And it'd be like skid row to keep playing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but what's what your next topic? Is, bro? <laughs> it's gonna be like a drive through all day. Everybody gonna be intense. Intense city. <laughs> Holy shit. But uh, yeah. but no, but yeah, bro. Yeah. Tent gonna be high as hell. Like I'm gonna let you finish your topic, bro. But bro, check this out. Like, go ahead. Check this out. Trailers, trailers depreciate mm. value, right? Uh huh. Trailers depreciate in value. I didn't seen trailers that were hundred thousand dollars drop to thirty thousand dollars after the pandemic go up to one hundred twenty thousand mm. dollars. Trailers that depreciate in value. In the short term, cars depreciate in, ba- in value, but I bought a car right before the pandemic and sold it for more than what I bought it for. It, bro, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for this deal. I'm waiting for these deals. But go ahead and get to your next topic, bro. waiting for these deals. I'm it don't seem like they're going to happen, bro. It just don't seem like it's going to happen. They already happened. Clorox, Dollar General, Target. It's happening. We're going to see, bro. I'm going to be right there. I'm going to be ready. I'll be ready to scoop that, scoop it up. So, yeah, man. So let's see. Let's get. Let's get in this. Let's get in this, bro. So we got potential Bitcoin ETF approval, spark speculation, and honestly, bro. And this, um, I think this also plays a part in these, uh, these price raises as well because when Bitcoin spiked the other day, when we got this fake news, fake fake news. We got this fake news about and this is from Coin Telegraph about this Bitcoin ETF. It spiked. It spiked like crazy. And I think when we spiked, it broke some key levels. Um, let's see. Where's that spike at? Yeah, we broke some key levels on uh, so we was yeah, yeah, bro. So we shoot, you see, we was we was floating around right here. We was floating around right here, man. So we got, I think this was the spike. Well, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think this was the spike right here that took us. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 28. See, so yeah, if I'm not mistaken, this was the spike right, right here. So yeah, we came all the way up and we touched 30. Yeah, but we touched 30, man. Look at that. Boom. We touched 30. So we had this whole, we had this movement right here from this. Uh, you can't see it. Hold on. Yeah, look, we had this movement right here from this whole Bitcoin ETF uh, debacle. What, what date is it right there? What date? What date does it start going up? This is about. This is about the. No, 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 no. Go to the right. Go to the right. Go to the right. Go to the right. How do you get rid of this thing? What date is that? This is like the fifteenth right here. Okay, interesting. Fifteenth. So that is that is separate. That is separate from the from the Middle East conflict. Yeah. So 15th, and then we kind of took a little dip right here, and then we we surged up to about 30, about 30 grand right there, man. So 
know, we broke some, you know, like we broke some key levels. This this Bitcoin chart, by the way. So can, can you can you throw can you throw like a thirty day, or um or like a fifty day moving average on it? Let's see if I can. Let's see if you can't. That's cool. Yeah. Um, it's cool, bro. I don't think I, I don't think I can on this one. It's cool. It's cool. I don't think I can on this one, but it's like we broke some we broke some key levels with that move. So we're back at twenty nine, which is good, which is good. So let's let's go back to the uh, let's go back here. So yeah, so once once that news came out, yeah, and it was fake by Coin Telegraph. Uh, it shot the price up, man. It shot the price up. And then later that same day, Larry Fink went on live, um, went on live and um, he did an interview talking about uh, cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, which also, I believe, caused a little pump, another pump as well. I'm going to get into that a little. I'll play that video a little later. But, um, but yeah, man. So we still got. Uh, see, let's let's look over. Let's look over this right here. So in a recent, you can see this, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, in a recent interview with CNBC, Coinbase Chief Legal Officer Paul Grewal expressed optimism about the approval of the Spot Coin Bitcoin ETF, Spot Bitcoin Exchange Traded Fund ETF by the United States Security and Exchange Commission. Grewal's confidence in the approval is grounded in his belief that the SEC is legally obligated to grant these applications. While no specific time frame for approval was provided, Grewal's remarks highlight a growing sentiment that a Bitcoin ETF may be on the horizon. And honestly, bro, I think the SEC is kind of delaying this because they don't want people to get rich. I think that's just the I think that's just like the the raw truth, raw cold blooded truth about it. Because I mean, and this is and we're talking about more than one ETF getting approved too, man. So if we can get, let's see. This right here, look, this right here. So we start right here. So if we can get this kind of movement, if we can get this kind of movement from what, let's say from 26,000 up to damn near 30,000. And this is just off of speculation. The ETF hasn't even traded or came out yet. And we're also talking about more than one Bitcoin ETF as well. I mean, I, who knows, bro? We can possibly see a two or three X from the Bitcoin price. And I don't think that the regulators. I think a lot of banks and congressmen and people in government in general still see um, crypto as a threat to whatever government currency they they work under. So I think. Yeah, I think but but yeah, yeah, but at the same got time, you got somebody pushing against it. But 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 now you got but now you have um you got Larry Fink, you know, who's the CEO of BlackRock. Well, I believe, I believe BlackRock has more power than the SEC, to be honest with you. And you have Larry Fink coming out being a proponent for people buying Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. You know what I mean? And there, I think, I think BlackRock is using uh, Coinbase as their, uh, they're using Coinbase as their custody holder for, for their crypto holdings. So. You know, it's almost like, dang, so not only is BlackRock, who I believe is bigger than the SEC, not only are they buying Bitcoin or and are advocates for Bitcoin, but you know, they you know, they telling people, they they letting the folks know that hey, this is what this is what they want, and this is what we're gonna do. And you wanna know something else too, bro? I think BlackRock lost a lot of money when they were when they were on this uh, ESG, you remember that? Everybody was on this ESG wave. And I think that they did a lot of, you know, they wanted to save face, get into that. But I, I honestly think that they, um, I think they lost a lot of money on that shit, bro. And I feel like to recover some of them profits, I feel like they're dabbling into this crypto market, bro. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna play this little I'm gonna play this little clip on Larry Fink. You know what? Matter of fact, let's just go ahead and play it. Let's just go ahead and play it now. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say before I play it, I'm gonna say fair use. This is um this is uh Paul Barron Network. He, he did a live recording with Larry Fink. And like I said, Larry Fink is CEO of BlackRock 
or the well, not nah, the biggest asset uh, manager in the world, in the world. So let's hear what they, let's hear what he got to say. Let me know if you can hear you heard this. about this rumor. You heard that? Yeah. And, right. and what did you Actually, say? I was busy all day. I probably heard it an hour ago. So it wasn't. Yeah, well, it and, was, and we should point out Ellie Tourette, my producer, broke the story that it was not real. But it's like wishful thinking, <clears> isn't it? <throat> isn't this what this is all about? Well, I can't talk about the specifics of anything. I think it's just an example of the pent up interest in crypto. And, I, and we are hearing from clients around the world about the need for crypto. I mean, when you think about, I think some of this route. At the want, the need for crypto, the need for crypto. Well, is way beyond the rumor. I think the, the rally today is about a flight to quality with all the. Yeah, so check this out, bro. You see this? So this is the day, this is the day we got that false, that false news right there. So we got this spike right here. You see this spike right here all the way up to about 29,888. Right. This is just speculation right here, bro. This is just speculation. So imagine when we, we're going to have multiple ETFs coming out for Bitcoin. But that's going to be a God candle. That candle is going to go straight up in the air. You know, all the issues around the Israeli. I don't think they're I don't think they're really ready for that just yet. Not just yet. War now. Um, global terrorism. And I think there's more people running into a flight to quality, whether that is in treasuries, gold, or crypto, depending on how you think about it. And I believe crypto will play that type of role as a quality. Let me ask you. There it is. <laughs> you see it? You see it? So, I don't know I might not fell off of you. I don't know I might not fell off of you. Yeah, y'all. So, crypto is... And will be that flight to safety as we um, as we progress into these high inflation times and these dark times, unfortunately, that we're in right now. So let's see, we're going to go through and we're going to talk about the U.S. SEC drops their claims against two Ripple Lab execs. So this is good news as well. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission dropped claims against two Ripple Labs executives in its lawsuit alleging the blockchain company violated U.S. securities laws to a court filing in New York on Thursday. The agency said in the court papers it is dropping claims that Ripple Chief Executive Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson, co-founder, aided and abetted sales of the crypto currency of FAPU, which is a judgment which a judge has found amounted to unregistered sales of securities. In its December 2020 lawsuit, the SEC accused Ripple of illegally raising more than $1.3 billion in an unregistered securities offering by selling XRP. Uh, check back in our, um, in our video section on the channel. We did a separate video breaking down the lawsuit, how the lawsuit came about, how the lawsuit was solved, it's a good video to watch to um, you know, familiarize yourself on what exactly went on and why XRP and Ripple have been targeted for so long. So, see, the judge, Annalisa Torres in Manhattan, granted Ripple a partial win in the case in July, finding that the sales of XRP on public exchanges were not registered securities offerings. So, you know, it's good news for Good news for XRP and Ripple. Good news for XRP and Ripple. Hopefully we can start to see more price appreciation as Ripple shakes, Ripple XRP shakes the haters off their back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, y'all. And uh, there is all, there's another thing I want to speak on as well. There's another thing I want to speak on as well, so. We all have heard about Bitcoin Lightning. Um, you've all heard of Bitcoin Lightning. I guess Bitcoin wants to turn itself into like a payments provider or so. So the network, the software that they're using is called Lightning Network, which allows fast payments using Bitcoin. Well, however, it came about on October 21st. 
yesterday. Let's share this tab right here. Let's check this tweet out. Breaking. One of the top Bitcoin developers recently discovered a massive security risk in the Lightning Network, which triggered him to announce his departure from the project. What? He claims there's intentional backdoors in the code that allowed attackers to easily get full control of the network. Hopefully nobody's using this Lightning Network crap, man. Like it. Me personally, I don't think it's going to work. Um, I'd rather just buy Bitcoin, rather just hold it. Rather, uh, let's see, let's not forget that the main backers of LNR Tether, Bitfinance, and Blockstream are ran by Foster, so it was a surprise. So, yeah, I, you know, nobody should be really even touching this uh, Lightning Network. I don't think it's, I don't think it's sustainable, especially on top of Bitcoin, maybe on something else, but. I think they could have chosen a better chain. We also need to take a look at and be aware. What's up, bye? Yeah, but I don't know what we're going on with. Yeah. <laughs> I kept I kept going. We also need to look at and be aware of these BRC20 coins, y'all. Hold on. BRC20. Hold on, let me uh let me share this tab. Let me share this tab. So yeah, bro, we got to we got to pay attention to these BRC twenty coins, bro. This is these are these uh, altcoins that are on top of uh that are on top of Bitcoin, man. I've been having my eyes have been glued to these charts, man. So we got Ordi. Oh, would you look? Oh, look, let's see. Ordi is at uh. Oh man, look at that. Seems like we're getting a little price. We're getting a little price drop. So. See, Ordi is up 30.58% in the past uh in the past week. So let's read about ordinals. Yeah, check this out, bro. So this is like a description of what this Ordi token is. So the total amount of bitcoins is 21 million, and one can be subdivided into 100 million Satoshi. Satoshi is a SAT, the smallest unit of Bitcoin. Now I remember SAT there's a there's another BRC twin we're gonna look at. Uh, after this one called sats and sats are the smallest units of bitcoin so we're going to get to that chart in a minute so uh, bro i honestly believe like these these ordinals and especially these the sats i feel like this is like buying bitcoin at its infancy bro for real it's like buying shiba inu before the price pump that's what i i really believe that man i really believe that because these Bitcoin, these BRC20 coins, man. Hey, this ecosystem is being built out, man. This ecosystem is being built out. And the main DEX, the centralized exchange that's um that's being built on top of Bitcoin called Unisat Wallet. Um, Unisat Wallet is going to use the SATS token as far as uh they're gonna use the SATS token. Hold on, I, I got for, uh, for gas fees and transactions on their uh on their exchange uh let me i uh, i got a uh yeah here we go right here let me share this tab real quick so look at this look at this man so sats brc20 will be used for gas within the modular system for swapping on uniswap given that this mini l2 directly serves all brc20 assets charging a specific brc20 asset as Gas fees on this layer two becomes a reasonable consideration. <laughs> on the mainnet launch, we are inclined to charge SATs, which is a BRC20 SAT specifically, as gas fees for BRC20 assets on layer two. Apart from effectively reducing network fees to an expected one fifth, another advantage is the increased functionality and utility value of BRC20 assets. So now we're adding some utility. Uh, to this coin as well so let's see let's check out this uniset check out this uniset wallet right here man so yeah so we got the uh honestly but this is almost like this is like you know uniswap this is almost like the uniswap of of uh, bitcoin. yeah yeah this is like the uniswap of bitcoin man so you know imagine being able to get into uniswap you know, before they had all of these other altcoins on top of Ethereum, you know what I'm saying? And honestly, bro, I'm going to take it. I think I may take a chance on this, man. I think this is going to be, I think this is, is going to be sweet, man, because 
there's a lot of people complain about how um, centralized Ethereum is, you know, because majority of the um, majority, the, the node, the operating nodes or the nodes that are ran on Ethereum aren't really, they're not spread it out. You know what I'm saying? So, but with, you know, with Bitcoin, we know that Bitcoin is going to have like the ultimate clarity, especially going into the bear market. So as Bitcoin goes up, I can definitely see these ordinals gaining a lot of that value, man. And as Bitcoin becomes more and more and more integrated into the world, as people start buying more, you know, learning about Bitcoin, they'll figure out, hey, they're, you know, Bitcoin also has um, altcoins as well. So I kind of look at this as getting, you know, say Ethereum, you know, Ethereum was developed. So you have Ethereum developed. Now you have people building altcoins on top of Ethereum. And you, bro, you have, you have thousands and thousands and thousands of altcoins that are sitting on top of Ethereum. So, you know, we now all of a sudden we have these BRC20 coins, you know what I'm saying? So we have these Bitcoin coins on top of it, on top of Bitcoin. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see what kind of projects they're going to, um, they're going to build on top of this, uh, you know, on top of Bitcoin. But here's the, uh, yeah, but this is like, you know, this is like I said, it's like the uni swap of, of Bitcoin. So, you know, trending in BRC20 coins, look, Sax, remember the Sax coin? We got Ordi, what we was just talking about. Uh, see, I don't know what BTCS is. And we got OX, BTC, I'm not sure what that one is. But the two, the two I'm looking at are Sax, Ordi, and see trending in names they also have like nfts you have nfts on bitcoin as well so isn't it's cool to see them expanding and bringing this out man this is going to be uh this is going to get interesting man i got my eye on these brc20 coins bro so but yeah so we got let's see we got these ordies so let's go back to this ordinals page so here we must first understand the inscription which is created by writing content to satoshis using the ordinals protocol the inscription does not need to use a separate token sidechain or change bitcoin what the ordinals protocol does is to write information to each satoshi such as text pictures audio video etc due to the size limit of the bitcoin block the main information for inscribed that is mint mint is mainly text and pictures in the form of nfts and tokens so yeah man this is one of the ones hey this is one of the ones that i'm uh i am definitely accumulating some of these these ordinals uh some of these ordinals right here. so look at it bro look at this so this launch and i mean we just doing straight down so we're down you know the all-time charts down about 83 percent. let's see but for the year i don't think they have i think they have data for the year so let's see for so past month you know, it looks like we're up uh, what, 12, 12% in the past month, man. So, uh, yeah, bye. So we got Ordi. And there's another one I want to take a look at also, Sats. So, I, 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 so this is the, uh, this is the Sats coin. This is Sats. So this is, um, this is the coin that Unisat is going to use for their, you know, transaction fees and whatnot. So you can see this coin was accepted. Let's see, nine twenty nine. Is that September 29th? So you know, since then, hey, bro, look at this. We going, we going up. We going up. We got a little dip right now. So my eyes have been glued to this chart, man, for the past week. So. So definitely keeping my eye out on Sats as well as Ordi. Those are my two picks as far as BRC twenty goes that I think will that I think will definitely have a place on the uh, on the Bitcoin network. So, but yeah, man. But like I said, other than that, you know, we got this positive news from Larry Fink. You know, we got um, we have Bitcoin ETFs awaiting to be approved. So. 
There are a lot of bullish catalysts going in into this next bull run, man. And we also got the happening coming up soon. So, you know, let's definitely keep our eye out. Keep our eye out on what's going on for that. So, other than that, man, that's it. Bye. That's it. Did you hit the big XRP? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got XRP. We got XRP. I think you dropped off. He dropped off when we got right down to the uh to the XRP. But basically they dropped the uh they dropped the lawsuit against, they dropped the lawsuit against the founders of uh of Ripple XRP. So but yeah, man, hey man, uh, as all these as all these lawsuits get dropped, because I mean honestly at this point, but SEC sees that I mean this is you know they're wasting a lot of their time and our tax money going after XRP and Ripple, bro. I mean, they're not getting anywhere with any of this stuff that they're doing. They're taking L's, man. So I think uh, they're gonna lay low, and lay off them, um, lay off them um, for the uh, the unseeable future, man. Hopefully they do. So the only thing we got left now, man, is these ETFs and this Coinbase lawsuit. You know, this Coinbase lawsuit is definitely gonna let us know, tell us about you know how. How this staking is going to go you know altcoins uh, you know things like that so you know hopefully we can get some positive news out of that which i think we will which i think we will i don't know man i think we will but it wouldn't surprise me if if the lawsuit ended up like the uh like the ripple case so it's like ripple got the ripple got a win but the sec got like a little win you know what i mean like they didn't lose fully but they got a little win, you know. The scenario I can see playing out for that would be maybe, maybe staking, centralized staking. You know, can't happen anymore. So centralized staking can't happen anymore. Meaning, if you can't, you know, you can't deposit your money on Coinbase, stake it, and earn a return. You know, say if we can't do that, then we would definitely see a boom in the decentralized exchanges so we will see you know staking go up with lido finance or or uh, rocket pool you know stake wise you know we'll see a lot of these decentralized applications gain more value if people you know they say you know okay no centralized staking yourself which you know, i'll prepare myself for that man but i mean i don't really stake assets on centralized exchanges anyway to be honest with you and I don't think right now is really the time to be to be staking right now, man. This is the time you should be uh yeah, hey, taking profit, hey, taking profits, waiting for retraces and buying back in, man. You know, unless you're unless you're accumulating for the long, long, long term, which I am, but there are some plays that you know you gotta gotta take some profits, man. Gotta take some profits, reinvesting. And uh yeah, man. Go get ready for this bull run, bro. Cool, cool, man. Well, I guess we can go ahead and get ready to end it here. Make sure y'all like this video if you found some information helpful. Make sure y'all share this video to anybody who may find this information to be helpful. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button to be notified when we release new videos. We will be chopping this video up, up into more videos. Um, if you're looking for specifics, so be out on be on the lookout for those. And I have a few more videos that I'm working on. I'm sure Curse Crypto has a few videos that he's working on for this week. So we got a lot of content coming from you guys. Make sure you guys are ready for that. Also, check the description section below for a lot of good deals, a lot of good platforms that we think you may be able to find helpful. So, um, yeah, with that being said, we'll see you guys on the hey, next We got one more thing to tell them. One more thing to tell them. It, begin, up, it begins with an R and it ends with a U. What's up? Rise up, man. Woo! 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 Rise up. Well, we got the Buccaneers today, man. We're gonna kick ass. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give y'all, I'm gonna give y'all that, bro. <laughs> y'all should, y'all should, y'all should come up with a W today, definitely. I'm telling you, but you, buddy, if you man, do not the quarterback. If you, not, if you do not, y'all might as well just shut the TV off for the rest of the season. <laughs> At least for them games. Hey, hey, bro! I'm 
at this point, I ain't got no team. I'm solely in it for watching the sport for the sport. So I'm gonna be on the lookout for the Dolphins, and I'm gonna be on the lookout for Kansas City. And I really, really, really hope Falcons make it to the playoffs because I do want to see them make it and get their head bust in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but you want to know some crazy? You want to know some crazy? Bro? Oh, they're like, gonna grill them, huh? the, the, the the whole NFC, like our division sucks. Like the whole NFC yeah, sucks. Yeah, yeah, that's how you know it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a wrap. Bro, you know, but you want know those gonna be crazy, <laughs> or you want know gonna be crazy, though? You know it's gonna be crazy. Somebody has to win the division. So it's gonna bro in the NFC South, it's gonna be a losing team. It's gonna be a team with a losing record. Look, it's gonna be a team with a losing record. New Orleans, you know, come out of the NFC South. And they're gonna host the playoff game, bro. We they're can gonna host. Be the no, 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 it's not, bro. It's gonna be the Falcons, bro. The Falcons look. The Falcons can have a, a sorry record, and we can host a playoff game here you in the first round. You going? If we go to the playoffs, hell yeah, I'm going. Hey, if hey, we go to the playoffs, hey, yes, absolutely. You might, you might as well put that money on some crypto. Oh. Oh, bro. You know, I love your strength. Oh, bro. You know, I love <laughs> Hey, hey, you know, I love I put no man, but if I can make a playoff, bro, I'm going to that game. You going to Yes, oh, yeah, man. They sell some crypto to go to that game. Hey, hey, bro. No lie. If, <laughs> if, 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 the, if the Falcon, if the Falcon go to the playoff before game one, oh, whatever, whatever, I will say this. Whatever one ticket costs, I will mm -hmm. be spending that money to invest in something. In and something? Are you, you say you're going to invest? You going to invest a Falcons ticket on it? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put a Falcon ticket on something. <laughs> oh, we gonna put a Falcon ticket on something. <laughs> and, 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 and it, it's probably gonna be whichever asset I like the most. Oh. That I feel is I, I'm, I'm I just for the sake of it, I might go with my personal feeling towards the asset versus it being undervalued. So I might buy me something good, something I really like. You know what I'm saying? Something I really like with the Falcon so, ticket money. With a Falcon ticket. Hey, man. Shoot, bro. Man, we going to see, man. We going to see, bro. So hope, like I said, hopefully, because the division sucked. And the, the Saints, bro, the Saints lost last Thursday. Saints lost Thursday night. So. I was all on track. You, oh, but uh, you should have seen how they lost. Buddy Ooh. dropped. But you Buddy know, I don't like going like too far into football on this channel. But, bro. Mm -hmm. You seen how you um you seen how Buddy for the Dolphins almost got a thousand yards? You're talking about it like uh 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 Tyree Hill. Yeah, bro, he Tyree, almost got a thousand, bro. Tyree Hill, bro. Tyree Hill can get two thousand yards in the season, bro. Bro, what is, what is what is this game six this week or game seven? I think it's week six or one, two, three, four, five, six. This game is week seven. This this week seven and this man got a thousand yards, bro. He got two thousand yards, bro. And I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Like I think Tyree Hill can be the first wide receiver to get MVP of the, of the league. He probably gonna be the first wide receiver to get MVP. Man, here. I wish I wish they team would have stayed. That's who my that's who I was on last year. I wish they would stay healthy last year. They they would have got two, bro. There's if they stay healthy this year, there's no reason it's that no Dolphins can win, bro. Bro, there's no reason why they. Should. But they, man, they, that's, that's like said, they crazy just, how they, they play. Win play last, they started off last year just like this until Buddy got hit twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey you seen the Dolphins coach? They coach look like a stoner. Bro. <laughs> Right. But he like a smart right. stoner though. Hey, right. don't you see him? Hey, you see him? You see him? He look like he like one. He look like one of the. He like one of those like. <laughs> That's crazy. I do some. Let me, let me go ahead and end this, dog. I'm gonna hit this end. So